So today's Tanya teaches us that there is the, um, what we call, I like to say the Torah Shubh Ksav, the written Torah is like the headlines. Um, and the Torah Shubh al are the details. So imagine you have an article, and you have the headlines of an article, and then you have the details of the article. So for example, there's the example that the al brings, that the Torah tells us, is a sign between your eyes. It should be what a You tie it as a sign on your hands, and is a sign between your eyes. Now, that could basically mean anything, and yet it means something very specific. That there's a box, and you have four par- four, four chapters of the Torah. The children of the head have four boxes. There's exact place where you put it. So even Shabbos, right? It says Shabbos, don't do work. So maybe what that means, don't lift uh, big boxes. And yet you're allowed to lift big boxes. It means don't light a fire, don't do this, don't do that. So the Torah does not... Huh? Don't be mechol Shabbos. That's right. So the Torah does not actually have... uh, The Torah is not understood unless you have Torah Shabal Peh, unless you have the details of the Torah. And this Torah Shabal Peh, therefore, is a clarification of the divine will. And the divine will, in a certain sense, is even higher than the Torah itself because... The Torah itself comes from the will of Hashem. This is what we call the Rotzin Hashem. This is the level of Keser. So Torah would be the level of Chachma, understanding or wisdom. Whereas the will of Hashem is Keser. Just for example, let's say love would be the motivation. Let's say why you buy your wife a ring, or why you buy her flowers, or why you send your kids to school. Behind it all is love. Now there are many, many details that come out of that love, but fundamentally it comes from love that all of these things take place. And therefore, when we go into halacha, we're actually getting connected directly to Hashem. That's why a lot of people would like to, say, have this kind of um, vague relationship with God. God's my friend, and He's so beautiful. But in a way, what they're touching is almost like people like art, and they like a nice painting, and they like a nice bath, and they like a nice, I don't know, uh, you know, view. They're touching this kind of beauty. Beauty is very beautiful. But you're not touching necessarily, if you're in a relationship with somebody, it's not enough to say, oh, wow, I enjoy being with you, it's so sweet. But what if the guy asks you for a favor? Are you going to do it? So the point is that a real relationship requires listening to the needs and doing the will of the other person. So on the contrary, it's our humility to do the will of Hashem, letting yourself aside, I and mean, it's not difficult, that's the problem with love. The love can be selfish, it's how it makes me feel. The love that is selfless is what's good for the other person. And that is the challenge that, like the Rambam says, that to do the truth because it's the truth. It's not because it makes me feel good and I have the spiritual high, da, 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 which is all very nice. But in the end of the day, the truth is that we are all part of Hashem and we are parts in a global cosmic story. History is his story and we have a part. And therefore Hashem, through the Torah, through the Tzaddikim, tell us what our part is. And much more important than how much you love Hashem is how much you're doing what He tells you to do. That's why two of the fundamental mitzvahs, which is loving and fearing Hashem, are actually by some of the categorizers of the 613 mitzvahs, not actually mitzvahs of the Torah. So how can you say love and fear of Hashem? The Ramah says it is. But I can say it's not a mitzvah. The answer is because they say it's the foundation which all mitzvahs come from. If you don't have love and fear of Hashem, why would you do anything? So the point is that love and fear are not, and this is also in life, you know, the hippies were all into love, and it's a nice idea. But in the end of the day, a relationship doesn't take love. It takes commitment. It takes selflessness. And so that's a nice little story. These people, unfortunately, this, they were like, I don't know if they were engaged, but they were lovers. And with the Holocaust, they got separated. And it turns out that they were looking for each other, and they both thought the other person died. And uh, the lady ended up in Port Elizabeth. And one day, this guy rocks up. He's bent over. He's all... You know, the Holocaust took its toll on him, and she's registering the Jewish people that comes, and she says, Chaim, don't recognize me? And this was her, her beautiful uh, love. And he's like, whoa, Esther, whoa. Turns out, in the interim, they had searched for each other for years. They both thought each other had died, and they had gotten married. So Esther says to Chaim, listen, we're now we're married. we got to forget about each other, and that's that. And they lived literally two blocks away, they raised families, they had nothing to do with each other for 40 years. And then within a week, somehow both of their spouses passed away and they got remarried. And then the families hurt. That's real love. 
In other words, real love is setting aside your emotions. Like the whole Western idea of love, as a friend of mine told me, Western idea of love is lust. It's all what I want, how things make me feel. But real love is the opposite. It's how do I make the other person feel? What am I doing for the other person? Oh, oh. And this is the idea of being a yid, which is not so much what God can do for me and the emotions, you know, a lot of people, they're happy clappies, it's very nice, it's all beautiful. But it's not the ultimate truth. The ultimate truth, and this is something the Rebbe really emphasized to us, is that we are all created by Hashem for a role. We all have a part in His world. And therefore, we have to figure out what our part is. You can have a mashpia, a uh, rabbi, uh, you know, particularly somebody that knows chassidus, that a rabbi that can guide, but the point is you have to know your part and do your part. And when each person does their part, that's Mashiach. Oh.